comic art fans. Well, many of you asked me to do a calf cribs video of my own before I pack everything up from Ohio and move it to Florida, so here you go. This is my generally messy desk. Got that MacBook Pro on the left, PC on the right, and my ultra wide monitor in the middle, which helps me do all the cool things I do on the shows and at video editing and helps me multitask pretty well. So, art on the walls, what have we got first here? This, of course, is one of my daughters, but they don't hang art on the walls, so I end up hanging it here. This is a Philip Moy Powerpuff Girl issue 5 cover. Really love this one. I picked it up at my first San Diego Comic Con. Next up, try to get that light off of there. There's light everywhere around here. But uh, this is a Giorgio Camolo piece that I picked up through Enrico Salvini while he was repping Camolo. Everybody knows I'm a fan of his work, and this is one of my favorite commissions I've ever gotten. I hung this one up here for you guys who like to call me a brony. It is, of course, not my art. It's, again, my daughter's. They won't hang it up in their walls here in Ohio, but uh, it's uh, by Tony Fleeks, and I just love his work and happy to have it on my wall, at least for another day. Some Disney photos there. And what else we got here? So there is a power fuse box behind that uh, gigantic print by Dynamic Forces. Thank you, Nick Berucci. That is signed by Dave Cockrum and Alex Ross. And I bought that at a Warner Brothers store even before I started collecting original art. It was something uh, that I saw and just felt I had to have it because I'm a big X-Men fan, as you know. Oh, and as you can see on the right there, I used to coach my daughter's softball team. Helped them win a few championships along the way, too. Now, the back wall, the stuff that you guys are so used to seeing all the time. You got the Thor hammer, Loki, and uh, hel helmets by Thor, of course. And the case... Down below here is where all of my portfolios are. So I gotta move a lot of art to Florida. And that little segment here, you know what, nothing too special. Got some Doom and Quake guys there. I used to do a lot of gaming in my day. The, um, you know, the Hellboy hand, I got that as part of a deal. I helped Anthony score a bunch of stuff one time. And in that deal was a Hellboy hand. And I said, as my commission, give me that. And so he did. All right, we look at a few things around the back wall. The Wolverine was a eBay purchase before I started collecting original art, and it was a one of those things hanging up in a store to promote the comics, and I just had to have it. As many people know, I go to the IX Art Show every year. Science fiction fantasy at its best in Pennsylvania, probably the best show in the world for science fiction fantasy artists and those who like buying art there. Uh, this one is by Elliot Lang, great illustrator. One year, my daughter Gwen did some modeling, and so I picked this up from an artist named Melissa Gay. She, uh, she's a great painter and very good likeness for Gwen. So we get our, there we go. This is a illustration by Guinevere Singley, and she's just a really fun, quirky illustrator. I always loved her work and had to pick a piece up. I actually got a couple pieces in the same style. All right, this is by an artist named Elizabeth Alba. It's about two and a half by two and a half. Very nice painting of an owl with some uh, gold, gold gilded kind of uh, highlights on it. I really like that piece. This is by an illustrator named Stephanie Pooney Moon Law. I've always been a huge fan of hers. This is, uh, let's see, get my shadow off of there. Boy, lighting in this room is bad. It's a small office, everybody. This is by Omar Rayan. Omar is an incredible painter, very fun illustrations, and uh, you know I can't can't say enough good things about his style. He's just he's fantastic, and if you ever have the opportunity, you should buy something from him. Up top there is a painting by Bob Eggleton. Always uh, you know in demand science fiction fantasy artist, so he's uh, he's always been one of my favorites, and happy to add that piece to my collection. Next up is a illustration by Wiley Beckert in pencil. She's doing a lot of work for Magic the Gathering nowadays, but I've picked up about four or five of her pencil pieces. I just like her style. Very Dungeons and Dragony. And you've got a very cool illustration by the uber talented Ian Miller. He did artwork in my favorite Tolkien Lord of the Rings book called the Tolkien Bestiary back in the day. And that's how I got tur turned onto his work originally. 
and he's just amazing. I'd love to own more pieces by him. This is a cover pre prelim painting, if you can believe that, by an artist named Daryl Sweet. Daryl left us far too soon, and uh, he's just an amazing talent. This is a prelim to one of the Magic of Xanth books by Piers Anthony, and it's a wraparound cover. Now, so you got to work the angles here, everybody. This is a painting by Ryan Pancoast. He did a kind of a world-building exercise, kind of Old West meets Dragons, and he I know you had at least one book come out from it. Most of the stuff were spot pen and ink illustrations. This was one of the few paintings that I remember seeing, and I was really happy to buy this at the end of IX one year. Uh, it's just a little kind of a woodcut. Uh, it's by an artist named Fawn Wee Dean in Alaska. She does a lot of really great work in the same style, and uh, as a sculptor myself, I really appreciate her work a lot. Here is another painting of Gwen, once again by Bob Eggleton was uh, surprised when I got to see this, and I, of course, had to buy it. Here's a small painting, for a 4x4, by Rachel Quinlan. I always admire her stuff. This is uh, it's called a Cameo Creep. This is by Chris Seaman. He's a fantastic painter, and he's done a series of these Cameo Creeps. He's probably done hundreds of them by now, but I got this one probably in the first set of paintings that he did. This is by an illustrator named uh, Rebecca Solo. She's uh, just she's just fun, you know, and again, uh, already framed when you're at IX. Like I say, you can buy a lot of stuff there that's already framed. I'm like, for, you know, I think it was maybe 70 bucks. And I was like, yeah, I'll buy it. I, when I go to that show, I'd like to be a patron of the arts and buy as much as I can from as many artists at the show as I can. So that uh, that's what I did with that one. And here you have something that Fish Benz remembers very well from a collector conversation. This is another Rachel Quinlan painting of a deer. Moving right along. This is a, it's hard to see in this glass, of course, but this is a illustration by an artist named Gina Matarazzo. She's a phenomenal painter. I can't afford her paintings, but I just uh, had to get this one. So much fun. Little mouse mermaid in a broken teacup. Next up, this is by a painter named Rhonda Libby. This was a prelim to one of her paintings. Fantastic painter. Again, kind of out of my reach on the painting uh, purchase side, but I picked up this prelim because I love her work. Uh, back up a little bit for this one. That is the Yeti foot. I did not cast that. This was created by sculptor Dan Chudzinski. Dan is, uh, he's an amazing talent. He teaches in Toledo. I've uh, only ever gotten to meet him at the IAC show, but I love this. Uh, my favorite ride at Disney is, uh, you know, is in Animal Kingdom with the Yeti on it. And, uh, I always wanted to hang this up and have a few photographs of my daughters and I on that ride as kind of uh, memories of all the fun times we got to have going to the parks down there. Maybe in Florida I will get to do that. That's a print, of course, from uh, John Byrne. Got that from helping the company sell a bunch of bunch of stuff one day through uh, through CAF. Uh, right here we have a commission, a convention sketch actually from Sean Phillips from my first San Diego Comic Con, 2003, and. John's just crazy talented. It's probably one of my favorite convention sketches ever. I mean, it's just perfect. Here's an Adam Hughes convention sketch. First one I ever got, and actually my wife Maureen picked it up for me, and uh, she said she would wait in line at a Heroes Con for me because I was striking out every time I tried to get on Adam's list. She managed to get this Jean's First Day piece. Uh, just fantastic. I mean, it's so funny and whimsical and just shows you the, the humor that Adam Hughes has always kind of vested in his work. And I think this was probably from 2004. And right beside that, Adam Hughes Iris print. Gary Land owns the original of that and likes to rub it in every time I talk to him about it. But uh, what are you going to do? I like the Iris print and I love Adam Hughes. I'll take it. And it's got the X Men. I mean, come on. All right. Moving on a little bit on to something else. Where are we? Here we go. All right. Moving on to something a little different here. We've got the Hulk with the Pearl Necklace by Tom Morgan. This was on the Dueling Dealers of Comic Art. Nobody in the audience wanted to buy it. I had to have it, so I made it mine. And right beside that, as everybody knows, I had that uh, cover illustration done of me. And I was on the cover of Vampirella Unholy, thanks to Nick Ferrucci. And as a thank you for all that I've done for, uh, for Comic Art, he sent me this fun, I say thee nay... <laughs> Me dressed as Thor, 
uh, illustration uh, on a uh, sketch cover by Ken Hazer. Thank you so much for that, Nick. And there's actually a couple other ones behind that, but I won't show you all of them. And a few more props there. There's the Bindiana Jones hat. Everybody loved that episode that Mike and I did. And of course, the infamous Billigan hat. Finally, last thing on the wall. This is a, it's a massive print, but it is from uh, an artist named James Clark, if I'm not mistaken. And he, uh, it's probably like th almost 30 by 40, probably. I'm a huge fan of Babylon 5, as was Maureen. So I saw these at a local auction house. And uh, yeah, too much lighting on there. Sorry, everybody, but um, just a great, great piece. And, uh, you know, fills a lot of wall space. And I've got two of these. Well, the other one's, of course, a little different than this one, but equally as cool. And last but not least, look at all of the costumes from the Dueling Dealers that uh, you know so well, right? We've got, what do we got here? The Billigan, the Magneto. I did a Star Trek a few times. Oh, and that's not anything there. Oh, got my Thor, got my Shaggy, got my Hulk, got my Loki, Loki's cape, and of course, everyone's favorite, Thor. All right, everybody, packing this stuff up and heading to Florida.